My next guest is the president. No, not President Donald Trump, even though that would be cool as well. We've got somebody that I think is, is equally as important, especially to the community of Montgomery, probably more so to this particular community, and uh, somebody that is also technically my boss. So I'm hoping that this interview goes really well. Uh, without further ado, the president of Faulkner University, President Mike Williams. Thank you for being on the program. Hi. Well, thank you, Caleb. Great to be with you, and uh, thank you for kind introduction. It's uh, good to be a part of this program today. Well, thank you so much for agreeing to do this, and uh, I, you and I both know why you're here, but the audience may not have heard the news yet, and so if you would go ahead and give some details. It turns out that Faulkner University is expanding, and there was some really big news breaking on that the other day, so if you would just tell the audience exactly what happened. Yeah, sure, Caleb. Yeah, yesterday was really a great historic day for the university. Um, as you know, uh, and many of your listeners may uh, know, is that we've launched a Center for Health Sciences to, uh, you know, really prepare more um, students for professional life in healthcare. Uh, the needs in our community are, uh, you know, nearing epidemic as far as the need for qualified, talented professionals. And so we've launched the Center for Health Sciences. And yesterday we announced the acquisition of uh, the Montgomery uh, Plaza, which is just adjacent to our campus. It's about 13 additional acres. And we're going to transform that uh, that uh, former shopping plaza into our new Center for Health Sciences. Uh, and so it's really an exciting opportunity uh, for the university. But I think uh, also very important to Montgomery and uh, a reinvestment in the community. Well, one thing that has been shown over time that w when you're looking at the, the lifespan and the, the economic uh, vitality of a community, one of the really big things that is a contributing factor is the educational opportunities and facilities there. And with a city like Montgomery that tends to be a little bit older in its demographics and tends to not have quite as many young people, I think that this is a fantastic move forward for the entire city of Montgomery, specifically because it draws high quality young people that would, I mean, by definition, if they're coming to Faulkner, getting a college education, and it really could showcase the city of Montgomery and benefit us as a, as a whole community as well. Absolutely, Caleb. In fact, I mentioned that in the press conference yesterday that, you know, economic development, uh, you know, is, is an outpouring of talent acquisition. And for us, you know, a great opportunity to recruit these talented individuals from literally all over the country that will come and be a part of the uh, College of Health Sciences. And then if we can integrate them into the community, integrate them into churches, nonprofit, you know, communities uh, in our city, uh, it's just a great opportunity for us to lock them down. And hopefully they'll see Montgomery as a, a great place to, you know, put their roots down, raise a family, and really contribute to the progress of uh, Montgomery and the River region. You've talked a lot about the health sciences and, and what that's going to bring, but a lot of people may not know specifically exactly what all that entails. So uh, could you just sort of give us an idea of some of the majors and programs that Faulkner will be able to offer as a result of this expansion? Sure, Caleb. Yeah, the, we've launched the College of Health Sciences uh, in 2018. And the first degree program that was uh, put together was a master's degree program in speech and language therapy. In fact, we just had a graduating class, the uh, first graduating class in May. And uh, to give you a perspective on the needs just in Montgomery, there's about a nine month wait uh, right now for speech and language therapy. And so if you're a parent and you have a child that has, has uh, developmental delays, you know, nine months is an eternity. And so we really think that this program is going to be extremely attractive towards preparing more individuals in speech and language therapy. Uh, and so uh, that's the first program. The second program is a, a physician's assistant program, high need area uh, for that in our region as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're slotted to start this fall. Uh, in fact, we're waiting for the final confirmation of accreditation um, to, to start in October. And uh, we've got 35 slots in the first cohort. We had a 1,000 applications for 35 slots. That tells you a little bit about the need 
sports nationally. Um, and then the next program is slotted to begin the fall of 21 is a doctoral program in physical therapy. And then in fall of 22, we'll launch a doctoral program in occupational therapy. You know, all of these programs are high need uh, uh, areas for our region and, uh, and really high needs for the whole country. And so I, I think it'll bring a, a tremendous opportunity for the university, but then also a great opportunity for uh, Montgomery to, to uh, attract people and professionals in this field and uh, in our region. Well, now I, I have a friend actually in Florida that wanted me to ask this question specifically uh, just to get a little bit of clarification because she was wondering about it. She's actually a nurse down in Pensacola. And she was wondering, being a member of the Church of Christ and being very active with their youth group who, you know, were coming up on being college age, if there was going to be a nursing program specifically, is, is that the physician assistant or uh, exactly what does that look like? Well, well we, are, we are looking at nursing. Obviously, nursing uh, gets a lot of uh, press of, of all the health care disciplines. Uh, obviously, the shortage in nursing is is epidemic really all throughout and uh, we are certainly looking at nursing and uh, uh, and that could be on the horizon you know after these four programs are launched uh, obviously we, uh, she's not the first to ask that question uh, in fact uh, we have a lot of you know public policy folks and uh, practitioners that love it I got to say, I think that those programs are going to be incredibly helpful. And you were talking about the popularity of and, and that popularity comes mostly from a need for some of these majors and some of these programs. And, and I can attest to that even myself, because, uh, of course, I, I went to Faulkner and Auburn. I split up my education between those two institutions when I was doing my undergraduate work. And uh, whenever I was hitting on a girl and when I say hitting on, I mean getting shot down by a girl. Um, like nine times out of 10, she was a speech pathology major. So that's a very, very popular program right now. Um, and, and of course, what you talked about, there being just such a deep need for each of these different departments and these different majors, uh, that really serves two purposes, is that it serves the community by training people in those areas and also serves the community by providing a, an educational program for a fulfilling career for a lot of our local people and our, our students that, that can be drawn to the community as well. From a facility standpoint, what is the long-term goal for this? Because we've talked a lot about the programs that will be offered, and of course that's the most important part, but also like what is the facility going to look like? I I've heard uh, some reports that sound a little confusing, that they're saying that we're going to set up in the old Burlington Coat Factory, and then some are saying we're going to tear that down and, and build a brand new facility. So in the long term, what exactly does that spot of land look like for Faulkner University? Well, I think, you know, it'll be a process, Caleb. You know, the first step is to transforming the old Burlington Coat Factory building, which is about an 85,000-square-foot facility. That will be transformed. And uh, if you look at the, go to the Faulkner website, we've got an artist rendering. It, it really doesn't look like the old, the same building, but that building will be transformed uh, into uh, housing these four ac academic programs. And then over time, we're going to continue to uh, uh, invest in that property and just integrate it into the uh, Faulkner campus. There's some current uh, tenants that uh, lease spots from us, and we're going to maintain those relationships. And, um, you know, and as we maybe have opportunity to, to grow into other areas of that uh property will do so, but that, that will be over time. I got you. Well, that somewhat answers a question that I had, because as much as I love Faulkner and love to see this expansion, think it's a really good move for the university, I also, like, one of my initial thoughts was, oh my gosh, what happens to Mr. Chins? <laughs> and so... Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, uh, we, we, uh, we'd we uh, offend uh, half of Montgomery if we told him that uh, Mr. Chins and Lex uh, uh, was uh, not going to be there, and so, yeah, those are two... Uh, just anchor places there in the property and obviously the mayor is interested in the probate court mm -hmm. and we want the probate court to be there and so uh this will be a process working together looking towards the future certainly and i'm sure that those will evolve over time and we'll try to keep everybody uh aware of what's going on there uh one of the things that i wanted to ask is because i think we're going a little bit more general here uh 
I mean, what is the value of somebody that is interested in any of these majors but just has had to kind of overlook Faulkner because they, they didn't have these majors previously, they didn't have these programs for them to take advantage of? Uh, I think that this is a great boon for people that really want a Christian education, a education that comes from a God worldview sort of mindset, uh, but just hasn't been able to get it yet because Faulkner hasn't offered these programs. I think this adds tremendous value to them and, and our recruiting ability as well. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, in our first uh, cohort in the speech and language therapy, we had students really come from literally all over the country uh, for our first cohort. And, and uh, many of them did not go to a faith-based undergraduate college. And, and so their introduction to, you know, a Christian university was really eye-opening. In our first uh, cohort uh, uh, in the speech and language therapy, we literally attracted students from all over the country. And most of them uh, did not come from an undergraduate college at a faith-based institution. Mm -hmm. So th this was their first time. And uh, many of them had a wonderful college experience at Faulkner and really got to see a distinctively Christian perspective on healthcare and uh, and how we really approach it holistically and try to, you know, meet the needs, not just physically, but emotionally and spiritually of uh the clients that we uh, uh, are putting our path. And so um, it's a really good opportunity for us to broaden the sphere of Christian education in, a, in this new arena. Well, I couldn't agree more. And if there's any occupation where you would need to have a, I think that it would be very beneficial to have Christian ethics and a Christian worldview. I mean, you would think that healthcare services would be right at the tip top of that list. Yeah, absolutely. And one facet that we haven't talked about, Caleb, that is a really important uh, part of this uh, project, uh, that we're bringing these four programs together. But one of the things that's going to be kind of the nucleus of this uh, effort is going to be a, uh, an autism center. And, uh, you know, autism is on rising at mm -hmm. epidemic levels throughout the country and even in the River region. Mm -hmm. And there's just not... You know, we're 90 miles away from a comprehensive autism center in Montgomery. And uh, so we're, uh, we're planning to launch a, a center, and this gives us a tremendous ministry opportunity to meet uh, not just the, the clinical needs of some parents and, fan and children in our community, uh, but obviously this is uh, those types of uh, diagnoses sometimes come with some very challenging uh, things with it. And, uh, and so this is really an opportunity for us to prepare professionals to really meet the needs of uh, this community or this segment of our community. You know, that's one thing that I've always really loved about working with you and working for Faulkner University is that it seems like every single move we make has two aspects of it. It has the aspect of what's good for the university. And in this sense, that's, of course, being able to draw in more students, be able to bring more people uh, into Faulkner. But then there's the secondary aspect that you just alluded to of how are we going to use this to build up the community and spread the gospel of Christ? And I mean, I think this is a, just a fantastic uh, opportunity for that and, and something that Faulkner has always really put a focus on, which is something I greatly appreciate. So uh, with all that being said, what would you say to parents right now that are contemplating either sending their kids to Faulkner or people, uh, students or, or even adults in our adult education program that are considering Faulkner uh, in the future? Yeah, thank you, Kevin. I appreciate the question. I think, obviously, you know, from my perspective, after working in higher education for 35 years now, you know, I, I'm more and more convinced that the choice that a person makes to go to college is probably one of the most significant life-shaping decisions that they make in their whole life. Mm -hmm. In fact, I would say it's a top three, only outranked by a decision to follow Jesus Christ and who they marry. And then after that, you're going to be hard-pressed to convince me that there's a decision that has more life-shaping implications than where you go to college. And uh, it's important because it's so much beyond professional. I think when you go off to college, you really do reassess your values and what you're going to base your life on. And, uh, and I believe uh, an institution like Faulkner really understands that process and helps 
you know, young men and women really come to know who they are, what they're called to be, and um, it's just critical. So that, that's, you know, number one. But going back to your last point as far as, you know, one of the things being good for the university, good for the community, that's what you want. That's what I think God has created this to be, is to be relevant to the community. He's equipped us with gifts to uh, extend uh, his grace and restore the world to what he intended to, from the beginning. And so, to me, coming to Boston University is like ex- the extension of the mission. It's about preparing young men and women to really run the communities and be a part of the solution. And, you know, I've always appreciated that both you and, and the other people that I've had the pleasure to work with at Faulkner have always seen it that way, that it's it's a ministry as well as a, a college and a university, and those two things work together in a, in a great way uh, seamlessly as well. Um, so if somebody was interested that we were just talking about, uh, where would they go to get more information? Who could they talk to? Yeah, they could go to the website, and then that's got all the contact information for the Office of Admission uh, and for the traditional students or under, you know, students graduating from high school. Uh, looking at Faulkner, and then obviously we can direct them to these uh, these different directors and deans of the graduate professional programs in the health sciences if they have a particular interest in those areas. All right. Well, thank you so much for being with us, President Williams, and especially being a trooper through uh, driving through Mississippi and losing reception several times and still working with me. We had some uh, technical issues there, but we overcame. Well, well, thank you, Caleb. I appreciate being a part of the program today, and I know your your listener base is our people of faith. They're people that really do uh, have a lot of shared vision with Faulkner and uh, as far as what they can do in the community, and so we're just honored to be a part of the program today. Well, thank you so much, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to, you know, because it's been a while since I've been at Faulkner now, and we've never actually done this before. Hopefully it won't be uh, as long before we get to have you back on the program. Again, thank you for your time. Great. Anytime, Taylor. Thank you. All right. That was President Mike Williams of Faulkner University, and like I said, just a fantastic guy, somebody that I really look up to and admire, uh, both for his leadership ability as a president and also just as a, a very godly man and, and somebody that I really admire because of that. But uh, I think this is just going to be such a fantastic opportunity for the city of Montgomery. I know that the city of Montgomery is not the one doing it, but just having Faulkner here has just been such a blessing. And uh, I think that it's going to be something that really helps out Montgomery as a whole and, and probably something that's going to help us out for years and years to come as this thing continues to develop. <laughs> Ever wonder where Superman gets his incredible powers? Some people say it's the yellow son of Earth, but I think it's because he subscribes to this channel and likes my videos. Now, I'm not saying that if you subscribe to my channel you'll necessarily wake up tomorrow as a super strong, nearly invincible alien, but it definitely doesn't hurt your chances.